accumulation register tables. To successfully utilize such complex objects as accumulation registers, we need to understand their inner structure. Let's start with a balance register. It comprises two physical tables that the platform keeps in a database. The first one is the records table. We can get direct access to this table via the system. And this is what the table looks like. Period defines the moment a specific record starts impacting the totals. Recorder refers to a document that relates to the matching record in the register. Line number is a line number in the respective recorder or document that contains the record. Record type can be either expense or receipt. Dimension tells us how the system breaks down the data. At that, we can have several dimensions like a product, a warehouse, a contractor, and similar. Still, the sequence of dimensions is important. When creating a register, we should start with the dimension of the highest priority. Resource tells us what exactly we intend to store under a specific dimension. And there can be several resources, including quantity, sum, price, and similar. All in all, this table is a place to store all register records. The platform keeps the records table in a database. To calculate balances, we need two tables, the one we've already mentioned and the totals table. The totals table is part of a balance register. This table contains the current total. Plus, it might include calculated periods totals. By current total, we mean up-to-date total for resources, as of date, later than any possible date found in field period in the records table. To make it easier to understand, the date for the current total in balance registers is set to 11013999000. A calculated period total is a stock balance for any month that ended before the period under consideration. Each time we add records to the records table, the system recalculates the current total and updates the value in the totals table. We don't have direct access to this table via the system, but here is how such a table for register inventory looks like. Now let's have a closer look at this table. The balance for each month gets automatically calculated on the first month of the day that follows the month under consideration. The platform sums up all records applying plus or minus signs as the case might be. To calculate the stock balance as of a specific date in March, we take the February total and sum it up with all records added before and on the specified date in March. With these two physical tables, the totals and records stored in our database, we can immediately begin to calculate the balance for any period we want. Now, some words about turnover accumulation registers. The key difference regarding the records table in turnover accumulation registers is that we don't have such things as receipt and expense. Keep that in mind when deciding how to use such a register. As in our example, we're using only document purchases. There is no mess in calculating turnovers that can sometimes happen with document sales added. Let's have a look at the totals table in the turnover register. Note that column period contains the reporting period or the month starting date. Though turnover registers have no such concepts as expense or receipt, should it be necessary, we can apply negative values to respective records. We'll skip it for now though. I now suggest that we consider the method for calculating turnover. In contrast to balance, turnover gets calculated separately for each month, which substantially decreases the system load when dealing with respective registers. As in the case with balance registers, the two tables here allow calculating turnover for any period. Just remember that in order to create a report, we had to select tables as the data source for queries. Here it is evident that balance register inventory contains three virtual tables, 
balance, balance and turnovers, turnovers. Thus, using the balance register, we can calculate balance and turnover. Still, we strongly recommend avoiding this kind of register for dealing with turnover. Turnover register supplier discount has only one virtual table, turnovers. Now, this register is unable to process stock balance at all. The virtual tables below rely on the register's actual records table and totals table. We'll talk about virtual tables in more detail a bit later. For now, though, it is enough to say that the platform does not keep them in a database and generates respective data only when there is a need for it. Now we can check how the platform creates turnover tables for both registers. So, to calculate a custom period turnover with a turnover register, the platform takes data from the totals table in the turnover register and data from the records table. Depending on the case, the portion from the records table gets added or subtracted from the total. When calculating turnover with information registers, we can refer only to the records table, but it leads to a high system load. As a final point, it's worth mentioning that using balance registers to calculate turnover is a gross error that leads to the waste of system resources. Using turnover registers to calculate balances is impossible, even in theory. The designation of information registers can be described as follows. How many resources do we have on our balance at a specific moment? The idea of turnover registers is as follows. How many resources have we spent over a specific period?